Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at the first law of thermodynamics. And what you will find is that different texts will represent the first law of thermodynamics in a different way. So let's at least clear that up so we no longer get confused by it. So here we have the two forms of the equation. It says delta u equals q minus w or you'll find delta u equals q plus w. And it's purely a matter of preference. They're, they're both correct depending upon how we interpret that equation. So I have the text, the, the text here that tells us what it is. If you see the equation like this, and I prefer that method, that's just my personal preference because when I went to college, my professors use that form of the equation. And it says that the change in the internal energy of the gas is equal to the heat added to the gas minus the work done by the gas. And let's see how that is represented here. So let's say we start out with a container of gas. There is a piston there. There's a mass on top of the piston. And so we have the weight of that mass pushing down on the piston. And then the pressure of the gas causes the force to push back. The force is equal to the pressure times the area of that piston. And so when the two are in balance, then that mass will then no longer move. So the gas is under certain pressure at a particular temperature, and there's a certain amount of volume. Now what happens when we add heat to the gas. When we add heat to the gas, that means that Q is positive. So that's what we have here. U represents the internal energy of the gas and Q represents the heat added to the gas when it's positive. When Q is negative, you're removing heat out of the gas. So we add heat to the gas. Well, that can result in two things. The temperature can go up or the pressure can go up or both can go up. Now, in our device here, as the pressure increases, it will push against the piston because it'll, the force will be bigger than mg until the two forces equal again. And so with a device like this, the pressure actually remains constant. So then the only thing that can happen is that the volume will then increase. And of course, as the pressure stays the same, the volume increases, you will add heat to the gas. But another thing that happens is that since the volume increases, when a gas pushes against something and the volume increases, then the gas does work on the outside. It, it applies a force, it expands the volume, and gas does work. When gas does work, it pulls energy out of the system. So therefore, we have the change in internal energy is equal to the heat that we add to the gas, and if the gas didn't do any work, all that heat would go into the gas, and that would be the change in internal energy. But since the gas also does work, some of that heat is used to do work, and so it, it gets then removed from the gas. And so therefore, the internal energy of the gas is simply heat added to the gas minus the work done by the gas. And so the best way to illustrate that is if the gas is doing work by pushing against something and expanding it, like in this illustration. But sometimes you'll see the equation like this. It's equal to Q plus W. And then students get concerned because they say, well, when do, I do, use, when do I use negative? When do I use positive? And is one of them correct and the other one wrong? Well, if you express it like this, the change in the internal energy of the gas, same thing as before, equals the heat added to the gas. There's no difference there. But now it's plus the work done on the gas. So if instead, we compress the gas into a smaller volume. That means we're doing work on the gas. That causes additional heat to be added to the gas. So instead, if we add heat to the gas, then Q will be positive. And then if we compress the gas at the same time, then additional energy goes into the gas, and that's why it becomes plus. So they're both perfectly fine. They're both correct. It's just how they're defined. And you can work all the equations and all the problems using either one of the two expressions of the first law of thermodynamics, it will make no difference. It's simply your preference. So one more thing here is that there's two more equations that we should always use in tandem with the first law of thermodynamics. The first one is the equation of the state of the gas, right? That the pressure times the volume of the gas always equals nRT, where n is the number of moles, r is the gas constant, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. So with that equation, this is always going to be correct because we're dealing with ideal gases and that's the ideal gas equation. And then on top of that, we can also use this equation right here. 
so that the work done is equal to the pressure times the change in the volume when the pressure remains constant we can use this equation if the pressure is not constant then we use the integral of p dv because p can change and we have to express p in terms of volume as it changes but either one it just represents that the work done by a gas is pressure times the change in volume or the work done on the gas exactly the same equation that's why it works for both and so that at least gives you an inroad into the understanding of the first law of thermodynamics and why you will see different signs in different textbooks and what they mean. And that is how it's done.